The movie starts as Detective Mike and Marcus are driving at speed to get to the hospital. They hurriedly went inside, pushing people aside. Once they reach in, Marcus's daughter, Megan, is holding their newborn baby with Teresa, Marcus's wife, by her side. Mike tells Marcus that he can't believe Marcus is going to be a grandpa. After holding him in his arms, Marcus learns that Megan and her husband decided to name the baby after him, which touched his heart. Mike then leaves the room when Marcus starts to cry and get emotional. In Santa Maria Xcotel prison, the women prisoners were on duty doing tasks. When the police got to Isabella Retas, she stood in front of her, shocked with wide eyes as Isabel was reciting something under her breath. She then stabs and kills the police officer and a riot starts inside the prison. She was leaving the prison in an ambulance wearing the police's uniform and once she got outside, she met her son, Armando Armas. He killed some people before he saw his mom and they left, setting the ambulance on fire and the prison. Back in their house, she gives him a flash that has information and she sends him to Miami to get money from there and kill the people who were responsible for the death of her husband, Benito Aretas. She warns him to keep Mike for last and kill him. In Miami, Armando is making a deal with mafias and as they are sharing the money, the leader gives Armando a small stack of money and tells him that will be all he gets to keep as a negotiation. When he tries to talk with the leader, he gets angry and pulls out a gun, which makes Armando very angry. He assassinates the mafia leader and tells the rest of the gang that his family will be taking bank management of the town, they are looking for some loyal employees and asks them who there wants a job. Lorenzo says something to him in Spanish and Armando tells him that he already got a raise. He tells them they will work for him from now on and tells Zue Lo to get his people in line and to make them stay away from his way so he would not have to kill them. After he left, all the gang members started collecting money from the ground. Marcus and Mike are celebrating with their colleagues about him becoming a grandpa. Marcus tells Mike that he wants to retire and watch his grandson grow. Mike argues that Teresa would not want him sitting at home all day. He tells Mike that family is all that matters. He also mocks him saying he knows that Mike is dying his goatee. Rita, Mike's ex-girlfriend, shows up and asks to see Marcus's grandbaby. Mike then congratulates her for her new position Captain Howard put her on. She thanks him and tells them she now works for AMO, which stands for Advanced Miami Metro Operations. It is a small team trained for investigations, which Mike believes is going to replace them and the old system. Marcus scolds Mike for not getting himself into a serious relationship and asks him if he's ever been in love. Mike tells him he's been in love once, but he just doesn't tell all his business to him. Soon their conversation took a different way and they started talking about an incident that happened long ago. Marcus argues that he outran Mike and everyone said so too. So they went outside betting on who would win in a running race. They bet that if Marcus wins, they will both retire for once and all. And if Mike wins, they will keep working like they used to. As they started running, Marcus couldn't keep up and he stayed in the back and Mike was winning. A motorbike out of nowhere comes up to Mike, and the man on the bike shoots Mark before riding away. People gathered around as Mike lay covered in his blood. Marcus kept calling Mike and asking him to stay with them. Soon the ambulance came and they took him to a hospital. In the hospital, they were all worried about Mike. Marcus's wife Rita was there with the rest of the team. Marcus was praying to God, asking for Mike to live. He promised that he would not get into anything violent anymore if God restored Mike's life. In the ammo headquarters, they are trying to find out who shot Mike by studying the bullets they collected from Mike. Armando is in Miami and receives orders from Isabel, who is angry at him for attacking Mike first. He was killing people responsible for his father's death. Rodrigo Vargas, a retired prosecutor. Jack Weber, who was forensics for 20 years in Miami. Leon Sorensen, a retired judge. They all stood against Benito Aretas in his case and Armando is holding them responsible for his death. Mike is still in the hospital unconscious with Marcus by his side, taking care of him and dyeing his goatee for him. Six months later, they all attended Marcus's daughter, Megan's, wedding, while Marcus was still getting emotional and crying. Mike joined them in a wheelchair and they were all happy to see him. He surprises them by getting off his wheelchair and standing up showing them he is all better now. He made a toast to the bride and groom while also thanking everyone. Back in the bar, Howard tells Mike he needs to quit because he can't just give him his own case to himself and that the ammo got this from now on. Mike argues that the ammo is just a high school musical with nothing to do. Howard goes on to explain that they have the bullets from the gun that shot him 
and that they're doing their investigations. Mike pleads with him to give the case to him and Marcus, but Howard asks if he even talked to Marcus about this. After discovering Marcus is now retired, Mike goes over to confront him. He tries to convince him to get back at who shot him. Marcus keeps telling him he won't do what they did anymore. Mike coded three times, and that scared Marcus. He tells Mike the guy did not steal anything from him, except for his legend, but he is still there and alive. If he goes out there for vengeance, he sure will get someone killed. Marcus tells Mike that this is a sign to keep away from violence. Marcus tells him that he needs to get his things together and settle down when Mike still begs him to get back with him. But Marcus dismissed him and left. Armando is on his computer watching reports about his dad when Isabel calls him and they speak in Spanish. After he hangs up, he starts to watch the video of Mike's shooting on an illegal website. The video of Mike's shooting got leaked and it was all over the internet. Rita shows up at Mike's place and tells him he can't get back into the force. She asks him to tell the ammo team to handle it. Marcus is at his home enjoying his retirement, but his wife is already tired of him and tells him to get out of the house. Mike goes over to see a man named Manny. He then hammered his fingers while asking him where the bullets that he was shot with came from. Manny confessed they were from Booker Grassy. Mike leaves handcuffing Manny to a pole inside his butchery. He reports to Howard with the information he got and yet again asks him to get him back into the case. Howard tells the ammo team that Mike will be consulting with them and that helps them be able to have him under their watch. Rita introduced him to the rest of the team. As they were heading to Booker Grassy in their van, Rita and Mike talked about whether they should bring him in for questioning or if they should use force. Mike asks her to stop calling him Michael in front of everyone. Once they arrive at their destination, Mike learns their way of investigation, which is from inside the van and by using drones. The drones showed them a deal being made inside a basement where Booker Grassy is also present. Mike notices the bag being empty and starts to leave to get inside. Rita calls out to him to tell him to stop, but he runs inside, knowing that they are about to kill Booker Grassy. Kelly went in with him, and Rita warned him not to engage. Soon they start exchanging shots, and Mike finally gets to Booker, and is about to get him out, when Booker gets stabbed and dies. Mike tried to get him to answer him, but he was dead, and Mike was already late. Carver Remy calls Marcus, and tells him the guy who shot Mike in a motorbike is trying to kill him. Marcus, who was sitting and watching videos with some ladies, assumes that he was lying to him and tells him he is retired and that he doesn't do any more violence. But Carver tells him he is telling the truth and that they can use him as bait to get the man who tried to kill Mike. Mike received a text from Marcus telling him that he got a call from 911 and to answer his phone. On the other hand, Mike was in trouble for acting without getting an order. He tries to explain his reason for acting abruptly was that he knew Booker was about to get shot. Then he got in a verbal fight with Rafe, one of the members of Ammo, when he started calling Mike's grandpa. Mike tells him just because he slept with his mom, it doesn't make him his grandpa. Marcus came to pick Mike up in the ladies' car and in the back was his grandson. Mike starts getting mad as to what Marcus would bring a kid to something like this, but Marcus explains that they will be dropping him at the spa with the girls. He tells Mike to take the baby and drop him into the spa. Once Teresa saw what was happening, she got so frustrated. Mike comes running out after he sees how mad Teresa is. Mike was mad at Marcus for being such a law-abiding citizen when he saw that he stopped the car at a yellow light, something they had never done before. He was also embarrassed to be seen in his car. Once they reached the location, Carver dropped into Teresa's car from the high building. Marcus calls the ammo teams for help letting them know where they are. Mike rushes inside and gets into a fight with the guy from the motorbike, who soon we see when Mike takes off his cover and sees his face. Armando. Marcus prays again for God to show him any sign. He chased Armando and was about to stop him at his motorbike from escaping. He kicked him and left. Soon Marcus and Mike uncomfortably drive off in the crushed car. Armando talks with his mom. At his daughter's basketball game, Howard tells Mike about a story. On a horse, a Buddhist was riding a horse, and another Buddhist was walking on feet as the man on the horse came and ran him over with his horse. The man who was walking asked the Buddhist on the horse where he was headed, but the man on the horse replies, that the man should ask the horse because he doesn't know where he is going. Howard then explains that the story represents being driven by the fears that lead us to nowhere to the point where we don't know the answer to the simple question of where we are going. He then asks Mike where he is headed 
As they were leaving the basketball court, Howard was inviting Mike for dinner when he got shot in the neck. Armando and his friend Lorenzo were shooting from a tall building, and Mike located them. Armando was aiming for him, but Mike got covered by a stranger, and he got behind a car. When Lorenzo asks Armando why he did not shoot him, he answers, he won't kill innocents. Mike makes a call, and we see that Howard is dead. After Howard's funeral, Marcus agrees to work with Mike for the last time. Isabel still orders Armando from Mexico. Marcus and Mike went to see an accountant, Picante Jenkins, who they needed to check some files from. Marcus tells him that they will knock and have a talk with him and ask for the documents they need, but Mike is holding too many weapons. Once they reach the door, Marcus once again reminds him they will only talk with Picante while attempting to knock, but Mike breaks down the door and goes in aiming the gun. Picante, who was using some drugs at the moment, starts freaking out. Marcus tells Mike that they don't need guns, he will penetrate his soul with his heart. As Marcus approaches Picante, he slaps him hard across the room. He tried again, but got punched by Picante once more. Mike sarcastically asks if what he is trying to do is working or not. Mike tells Marcus to let him handle this, and he goes over with his gun pointed at Picante, who was now telling him he knew who he was from the shooting video he was, and tells him he'd be eating him up if it wasn't for the gun he was holding. As they are about to start a fight, the ammo team gets there and stops Picante by electrocuting him. When Mike starts to get angry at the ammo for showing up, he learns that Marcus is the one who called them. Marcus explains that this time they will work with the ammo. Back in their office, the ammo team tells Marcus and Mike that all the people who were killed are related. There are prosecutors, a judge, and a captain. They tell them they have more than 800 cases that they share with the people who are dead. They couldn't get any relevant information from Picante, but Dorn pulled out Picante's social media. Searching through his pictures, Marcus and Mike saw Lorenzo and knew who their enemy was. Marcus tells them he used to coach Lorenzo, also known as Zwei Lo, before he joined a mafia team. He used to make him sit on the bench as a punishment for calling him names. He is now into drugs and weapons, and he works for Taglin's lieutenants, one who was killed the same night Mike was shot. He has no mortgage and no bank accounts, but they learn that his birthday is tomorrow and the party is happening that night. They all agreed to meet at the party dressed casually. When they arrive at the party, Rafe gets them in saying Mike got divorced recently and he needs to be in. Kelly was serving Zuelo drinks while Dorn was in the car monitoring their every move. Kelly lets them know the status of the place Zuelo is in through their earpiece. Marcus started telling Mike that he hadn't had any sex for a long time, assuming nobody could hear him, and that he searched the internet for some really weird stuff. Mike stops him telling him they all can hear him through the earpiece, and they all confirm that they heard what Marcus was saying, and Marcus apologizes. After Mike and Marcus got their position set with the rest of the team, a man approached Rita trying to hit on her, and they held off, but she avoided him urgently, which made Mike show hints of jealousy. He was saying how Rita was not dressed properly. Rafe got into the DJ's place and made a shout out to Zue Lo for his birthday. Marcus and Mike get to Zue Lo's with the crew who is serving drinks. They got to his right and left side as told him that he was going to jail tonight in a sing-song voice. Kelly brings out her gun and as she is aiming it at Zue Lo, he jumps from the balcony where he is located and escapes. Mike and Marcus start driving to follow Zue Lo with a car mine took from a starter at the gates. Dorn helps them locate where Zue Lo is. Mike then states that they are crossing 395 into Overtown, but Marcus tells him they can't go there since Zue Lo has dangerous people there. But Mike assures him that they are dangerous people. Marcus then tries to tell Mike to pull over, but Mike keeps driving. Marcus insists that they pull over. When asked why, he tells Mike that he made a promise to God that after Mike got shot if he makes it alive, he won't get into anything violent and that he wants to keep his promise. Mike then tells him that God knows that was a lie and that violence is what they do, what they've been doing all their lives. Mike then shot Zuelo's bike and they went to check on him after he fell. He had a big ugly bump on his forehead, which made Marcus disgusted, but he went ahead and touched it. They put Zuelo in a car after Mike checked his pockets and took out his phone. When they were about to leave, his people came on motorbikes and circled their car. Inside the car, Mike and Marcus are trying to wake Zuelo, and once he is conscious, he recognizes Marcus and calls him names which he used to call him when he coached him. Marcus then pushes into his bump. Mike asks Zuelo who is trying to kill him. He tells him that everybody wants to kill him. He tells them both that they are going to die tonight. As he was talking, the ammo van swerved in and started firing. Zuelo gets away from them when Marcus gets distracted trying to thank God for ammo's arrival. 
Zuelo starts riding on one of his friend's bikes. Mike also took a bike and told Marcus to get in on the side spot. He hesitated after seeing there was a dog in there, but he ordered him to leave and joined Mike on the bike. The ammo van explodes as Marcus and Mike leave. Marcus finds a grenade and he hesitates whether he should throw it or not, but Mike pulls the trigger and tells him to hold on to it. They then fired it on the gang that was on the bike. Marcus now finds a gun and Mike orders him to shoot at Zuelo. Marcus kept telling him about the promise he made to God and that he couldn't use weapons anymore. Mike tells him that by doing this, he's also fulfilling God's wish and that he will once become a vessel to God's works. After Mike finally convinced him to fire, he took down the people who were on their tails from behind them. Soon, Armando shows up in a helicopter and tries to shoot Marcus and Mike and then lets a chapper down for Zuelo to climb on. After surviving the blow from the helicopter, Mike ends up jumping onto the ladder with Zuelo. Armando tries to shoot Mike, but Zuelo gets in the way and he shoots him dead. Mike and Armando lock eyes and Armando says something in a foreign language. Marcus then starts shooting at the helicopter, which makes Mike jump into the water. Back in their office, Mike asks Dorn to break into Zuelo's phone hurriedly without the others watching. While Marcus is having a conversation with Kelly and Rofi about Dorn, he asks them how he got so good at the tech stuff. Even though he is big, they tell him he was a bouncer before he joined them. Once they open Zuelo's phone, Mike asks Dorn to send the message Hasta el Fuego to all of his contacts. He then tells Dorn to leave and starts searching for Santa Maria Ixcotel prison. When nothing comes up, he searches for Isabella Retas and a message that says, Hey Mike, shows up on Zuelo's phone. Mike looks through her files and finds Armando's documents. Rita apologetically tells her group that ammo is shutting down and they can't operate anymore. Marcus tells them everything will be all right and to trust him on this one as he rushes outside following Mike. When he asks him if he is all right, Mike confesses that Armando could be his son. He tells him 24 years ago before they got partnered together, Howard took him out of the academy and since nobody knew who he was, he sent him to work with a Rattus cartel case where all of the victims took a part in and were involved. He explains that this is revenge. Marcus tells him that Mike wasn't on that case, but Mike tells him his name wasn't on it. He went by the name Ricky Rollins. And even though Benito Aretas is dead now, Mike had a deep connection with his wife, Isabel Aretas, when he was her driver. They talked about everything and she showed him about the game, how to walk, how to eat, and how to even put clothes on. The only time he ever fell in love was with Isabel Aretas and she was a married woman. He soon went ghost on the full operation after they both decided they were going to run away. They used to call Isabel La Bruja, which translates to the witch, because she was into some dark stuff and Mike tells Marcus that she is a cold stone killer. Mike had to put her behind bars for the rest of her life and he chose the badge ever since. Amused, Marcus asks Mike how he could sleep with a witch, a married witch to be precise. Marcus also tells Mike that they can never know who Isabella was sleeping with and that Armando couldn't be his son. But Mike tells him that she gave birth in prison exactly eight months after her arrest. Benito Aretas couldn't have children and that just makes the whole thing real. The words Armando said to him, hasta el fuego, was something he and Isabella made up which was not even real Spanish. It meant something like that they would be together until they burn. He tells Marcus that he's the right age, ruthless, and also fearless like him. But Marcus calms him down and Mike leaves as Rita arrives. Marcus shows up inside the plane Mike was on and tells him he won't let him go on this mission all by himself. He tells him they fly together and they die together, which earns them strange glances from the passengers. On their way out of Miami, Marcus asks Mike what he will do once he sees his son. Mike replies that he will kill him. After switching seats, Marcus tells him that he will go to hell if he kills his son, but Mike won't budge. He then mocks him about the fight he had with Armando and how he kicked him so well. Marcus asks if he could be the godfather, but is told to shut up by Mike. Once they get to Mexico, they get their guns and weapons ready. Mike gets a location text from an unknown number on Zuelo's phone. The ammo team shows up and Marcus tells Mike that Rita is the one who called him. They both agree that they feel safe when the team is here. They go over the plan one time before getting ready. Mark tells them that he is the bait. He's going to meet Isabella at Hidalgo Palace outside the city. He will keep her talking until the rest of the team finds the shooter. Rita tells them they get it done and be back in the States by dawn. Mike warns them that he needs to be the one to kill the shooter. Rita gives Mike a necklace and tells him not to die. 
Mike arrives at the old building and the rest of the team follows his every move from the van. Isabella walks down the stairs and Mike searches her for any weapons. She leads him to a chair while speaking in Spanish when he asks her where Armando is. She takes off the necklace Rita gave him, which makes the team lose their connection. Marcus was going into the building when Dawn detected movements around him, and soon Isabella's guys were coming out of where they were hiding. Isabella tells Mike she was going to surprise him with a baby after they ran away, and Armando knows him as a traitor, not his father. As they were sitting and talking, Marcus got into where they were, and behind him was Armando pointing a gun at him. Soon Armando and every man in his gang were pointing guns at Mike and Marcus. Marcus tells them that they need to talk without the guns, since lack of communication is what got them into this kind of situation in the first place. The ammo teams burn up the place and get in. Isabella and Armando were heading to the chopper where the rest were shooting at each other. Mike throws a gun to Marcus, but he misses it. And Mike tells him to wear his glasses while using a table as a shield and firing at the ceiling. The ammo teams cover them up, and before heading for the stairs to follow Armando and Isabella, Mike tells Dorn to hurt some people, and that he will for the therapy which Dorn accepts, saying that he is going to need it. During the firing, Kelly got shot in the knee. Up the stairs, Mike and Marcus were aiming for the helicopter. Marcus then shoots it, and it comes down on the building and ends up burning the whole building. Rita calls out to Mark and Marcus as they are all leaving the burning building. Mike and Marcus are looking for Isabel when she shows up and Armando grabs Mike's leg from downstairs. Isabella then starts to stab Marcus all over his body, while Mike and Armando are in a violent fight. Marcus knocks out Isabel on a pole. Mike grabs Armando by the neck until he can't breathe. They both get up on their feet, and Mike looks at him with sad eyes, before telling him he's his father, and that he doesn't want to fight him. He kept telling him he didn't know, but Armando fought with him. Marcus got in and got kicked by Armando. He asks Mike what he is doing, and he replies that he is trying to penetrate his soul with his heart. Armando grabs Mike by the collar and drags him to the edge. He asks who he is, but Mike tells him he already answered. Calling Mike a liar, Armando asks him once more who he was. Mike tells him to ask Isabel, who is now standing behind Armando. He confronts her if he is his father. She contemplates before telling him the truth and orders him to kill Mike. She angrily takes a gun and shoots but gets Armando instead of Mike. As she is trying to shoot again, she gets shot in the face by Rita and she falls into the pit of fire. Marcus and Rita tell Mike that they should leave as the fire is getting stronger, but Mike wouldn't listen. Suddenly the fire exploded and Marcus was thrown to the edge with Mike holding his arm and asking him to pull him up. Rita is on the other side of the fire, unable to reach them both. Armando gets up and helps Mike pull Marcus up before they carry him and leave. After they reach outside, they try to stop Armando from bleeding and Mike promises him he will be there for him. Marcus also tells him that he's also called Uncle Marcus, but they shall discuss that later on. Soon they all gathered to celebrate Rita, becoming the new captain, and they all raised their glasses. Dorn says he got some good news and tells them that he started therapy and his therapist told him that maybe they should all have one session with him. Mike and Marcus go aside and say he won't go to therapy. Mike then thanks Marcus for what did for him and that if he wants to retire, he won't stand in his way. Burr Marcus replied that they are doing this for life. Mike surprises Marcus and Teresa with a three-day stay at the Marion Springs Resort as an apology for the spa he crushed. And since Megan and Reggie are on their honeymoon, Mike and the ammo team agreed to look after little Marcus. Theresa comments on how good Mike looks holding a baby, and Rita agrees. Soon they all left Mike with the baby telling him they would check on him tomorrow. Marcus and Mike soothe the crying baby by singing the bad boy song, which Marcus forgets the lyrics to. The movie ends as Mike goes to a cell to see Armando and asks him how he is holding up. Armando tells him he has a lot of debt to pay. Mike then tells him an opportunity may have presented itself for him to pay some of that debt and asks if he's interested. Armando agrees and the screen goes black. And with that, the movie ends. We hope you enjoyed our video. Watch the next recaps on the screen and don't forget to subscribe for more amazing recaps. See you in the next one.